This video is going to assume that you have already logged into your uh, Gettysburg College's ArcGIS online account. Uh, everyone should have an account. And once you get to the right page, it's going to look like this. It's going to just say Gettysburg College. It's going to have your name up in the corner and these options. We are going to create a map and import the data that we downloaded into a CSV file. So I'm going to start by coming here to Map. And it's got some you know, basic instructions on making your own map. Now, I've already started to make a map here, so I actually need to make a new map. Um, but I think I'll just leave this one like it is for now, because this is what yours will look like. You'll have this empty world map. Perhaps it'll be zoomed into North America when you get started. But the default is a world map. And what we're going to do is put a layer of information on top of these geographic uh, locations. And they are called layers in ArcGIS and ArcGIS Online. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a layer. We can search for layers of other people's data. We can browse uh, data from something called the Living Atlas, also a very good source. Uh, sometimes we can find layers online that we can add in. Or we can upload a CSV file uh, of our own data and place that in there. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. I clicked on Add Layer from File. And it's going to say, go find your file. And we have a CSV file. So browse. And I called it Agent Marriage. It's right there. Open. It's thinking about it. OK. That's been chosen, and now I'm going to import it. And it wants to know, you, you need to check this. How are we going to locate, um, how, how are we going to match that data up to the geographic locations in the ArcGIS online map? By coordinates, by places, or do you just want this to be a data table and not matching it up? This is smart enough to know that addresses or places is what exists inside of here. And I need to change this to world which I can do by scrolling down. So addresses or places in the world. And it has guessed that the location field is the, is the column called country. Excellent. I'm going to say add layer. Not all features were located were added to the map. Four addresses in the file could not be located. So there were four names of countries that did not match up with what ArcGIS Online has for country names. So later, I might go into uh, this map more closely and see if I can figure out which ones didn't come over. I'm suspecting Congo, uh, Macau, and a couple of other places that um, Sometimes the order of the terms in the name of the country might vary. But for right now, we're just going to say OK and live with it. All right, so this is done. The larger the dot, the higher the age at first marriage. So greater than 33.2, smaller than 17.5. It made some choices about how to divide this up. If you are familiar at all with statistics, you'll notice that this looks a lot like how software sometimes handles histograms, in which it takes a lot of different values and puts them inside of various buckets of certain sizes. Um, most software chooses those by default, and, and so is this. There are ways to go in and change this um, and define our own uh, points, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to stick with this. All right, so there, looking at our map, we can see this may or may not be the best way to visualize this, although generally I can definitely tell that age at first marriage is lower uh, uh, through much of Central Africa and portions of uh, Latin America than it is in Europe and uh, other portions of Egypt, bleh, of Asia over here. Uh, however, uh, through this area of Western Asia, uh, we also have low ages at first marriage. The more I zoom in, the easier it is to distinguish the sizes of the dots for various countries. So it becomes a more useful way. Yeah, here's an example. Our website said Congo, comma, Democratic Republic. So I can go back into my website and change that to DR Congo, and then I know it's going to match. Uh, Angola was probably also a DR issue, too. If I come over here to um, 
China, I suspect I will find uh, some other issues. I'm looking for uh, some provinces of, not provinces, uh, but protectorates of China. Um, here's Manila. So that's kind of fun. And that's really all it takes to get your data into ArcGIS Online. I could now choose some alternate ways of visualizing this information. Heat maps, those are kind of fun. Although, um, let's zoom out. Uh, the idea here is that the higher ages at first marriage are the yellowish colors and the uh, bluish colors are the lower ages at first marriage. This is not a particularly helpful way of visualizing this at all. Counts and amounts. Um, this is more of a gradation than uh, in color than in uh, size like uh, that one was. And then unique symbols. It's just a lot of different things we could do. Generally speaking, I think this was, while this is not super, super valuable, if you can zoom in a little bit, it becomes a much more valuable way to look at patterns in age at first marriage. Um, which is a demographic variable, social variable, is tied to all sorts of things um, and is very strongly related to the amount of um, female education in a place. There are other things I could do to this map. Maybe I don't like what this literally looks like graphically, and so I want to change my base map and pick something that I think is, is prettier. Um, not all of these are going to work terribly well, but I'll say, let's see here, the National Geographic one, that's beautiful. Uh, looks kind of like an atlas. Uh, maybe there's some other ones that I might like more. I think that's the one. I, no, this one's a little bit different. It emphasizes the oceans. Maybe not your best bet, but I find this one very helpful in just visualizing a pattern that spans across the world. So that is step one, how to import some data into your map.